Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Pass Ball Show brought to you by JohnPielli.com. It's, as always, it's exciting to be with you. Six o'clock, Tuesday, 26th day of December, 2017. Uh, baseball, sports, unifying America. Another day with the Pass Ball Show. And we will have some guests coming on later on in the week. And as soon as I get them confirmed, we'll... We'll bring them into the show. Obviously, the last couple weeks we were lucky enough and fortunate to have Billy Martin on the program. And we do have some other guests that we've put together from the baseball winter meetings in Orlando. And like I said, as they come, you know, it's going to be a simple, hey, pass ball show with so-and-so. It's worked out pretty well. Um, National Football League, another Sunday, another controversial call. And I was talking last week about the fact that according to the rules the officials seem to be doing their job I'm going to add a little bit more about it and we're going to talk about some conspiracy theories and speaking of conspiracy theories we got the news that's always set to be biased in a certain way and the people that are reporting stuff and when things come together and you want to blame others It's pretty easy to blame somebody you don't like or blame somebody that you have an issue with for a certain reason. And we we tend to not talk about that as often as we should. So we will be talking about news that's biased, and I'm not going that fake news campaign, but if you set news and you tend to blame people that you don't like or uh, narratives that that you don't agree with, you know, it's easy to make your points when you're piling on things that you don't care for in the first place. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. I do want to talk about a little about the Winter Classic in the NHL, which I think is an outstanding thing, and a little bit about the NBA. Do the top players deserve to have the calls go their way? Or should there be some point where the officials or the referees decide that they're going to call the game as it is, as opposed to cater it towards the best players getting all the calls and things to go that way. Because if you look at it, and I'll elaborate a little bit on it right now, as opposed to you know later on while I'll get into a little more, but because the NBA is such a star-driven league, do the best players deserve a little bit more? Should they have all the calls go their way because the fans are there to see them? In other words, screw the rest of the players that are on that court. You know, LeBron James and Steph Curry and Kevin Durant, do they deserve all the calls because they're the big stars? Talk about that in a little bit. But we're going to start the show by talking about the NFL and the replay system, particularly on the catch rule, because I think... We've stated a lot that the catch rule needs at least some revision or at least needs to be discussed a little more. And if you heard a couple of the segments that I did last week on the past ball show, we were talking about how the rule is set and replay in general in sports, I think needs to be looked at and needs to be studied. And we need to figure out what is the best service for replay in sports because replay the way it's set now is more counterproductive than productive. And I'm not talking about getting rid of replay altogether. What I'm looking at is the fact that we are we have the benefit of technology. We have the benefits of being able to freeze every single frame. So now we're looking at as fans and the media, but also the people that are making the decisions in regards to the replays as we're seeing them, we're kind of looking at something different than we were before. And we could make the reference in baseball when we talk about the second base play. You got a guy sliding into second base and we're determining whether they caused interference to the second baseman or the shortstop. And now all of a sudden we're dissecting the tag that's being put at second base and freezing every single frame. We're getting hundreds of thousands of different frames to say, hey, 
was his leg and his hand on the base every single one of these times, which is creating an alternative source of reality. Because a guy that slides into second base in normal time, we get to see them as they're able to hold their hand or their leg on the bag, and it doesn't look like there's much of an issue in regards to them being safe. Now, as we're you know, combining every aspect of every single picture that we have and every single frame that we have, we're looking at the play completely different than the way it was originally set to be. Is that person 100% safe or are they 99.9999999999% safe? That's not the reason that replay was created. Like I talked about last week, the Denkinger call, the Jim Joyce call on the Armando Galarraga perfect game. That's what replay in baseball was created for. And think about it. In the NFL, replay was not created to prove that it was 99.99999% a catch and therefore not a catch. If you look at the, the play that in question this past Sunday with the Patriots and the Bills, you're looking at a catch that pretty much was a catch, but it's almost like, and like I suggested last week, we're looking for a reason to make it not a catch. And I don't know, I mean, I, we could go a little further on a conspiracy theory here and push it a little further, which I will do in a little bit, I'll promise you. I'm going to get into conspiracy theories today. But the catch, as it's set, are the officials being instructed and the National Football League, the way they set their rules, is it set to make it not a catch? In other words, we looked at replay, and replay particularly in baseball and football, and we were told that if, unless there was absolute conclusive evidence to overturn a call, that a call should stand the way it was called on the field. And remember, we were talking about replay not to replace the officials and the umpires, but replay to help and aid and assist the officials and the umpires. Now, both sports have spoken out and said that this is the way replay was supposed to be used. It's supposed to be used in cases of evidence that exists that is completely conclusive to overturn the call the way it was originally called by the officials and by the umpires in baseball. Now you're seeing us get away from that. It's almost like the exact opposite. You're looking at a catch, especially when it involves the football potentially touching the ground and the receiver having or being declared with enough possession for the play to exist. Now it looks like we're going to continue to study this play frame by frame, micromanagement by micromanagement until we find an instance where we could refute the possession of the ball. And it's the exact opposite the way replay was intended. Now we could talk about the rules as the officials and the replay judges are, are doing. Are they doing their job? I think for the most part they are. But what I'm looking at right now is something that's a little bit stronger and that's the use of the replay system which is kind of right now being the opposite of what the intention of instant replay was for. Now I'm not going to get into the thing where we're talking about the, the game. You know, the game being speeded up. Because we knew once, we're, once we started with instant replay in professional sports, we're, we're going to go the exact opposite. Games are going to be a lot longer because of it. But, you know, to me, that's, that's not my issue right now. I don't have a big issue with replay the way, it's, the, the way that it's, you know, making games longer. There's plenty of other ways that we could shorten the game in football and in baseball. But I'm looking at this, and this is starting to bother me because I think we're getting a little contradictive in regards to the way that 
instant replay was created. It was created as an aid to the officials in the National Football League and an aid to the umpires in Major League Baseball. And now it's looking, it's looking as if it's put to replace the officials that are there or micromanage them to the point where we're overturning every single one of their calls. And I'm looking at this and I've studied it pretty hard. I'm watching it just like everybody else is over the last several weeks, over the season, as, as, as far as we've gone. Watching replay and you know, we're certainly have had it thrown in our face enough to where we, we are seeing it time after time. And the game is ends up being delayed because of the calls on the field and as we're looking at the replay and we got these experts, you know, these former officials that are over there commenting and telling us what they think the play is going to be. And by the way, you know, they're they're wrong half the time. Because I don't think the understanding of what the rules and what the replay is supposed to be have been clarified enough. Now, I do think the catch rule has been clarified. And I spoke about that last week. The, the, the rule in regards to what a catch is, I think, is being enforced. But now I think it's t being taken a step further where it seems like the replays are there with the intention of overturning the call as it was made on the field. Which, if that's the case, that's completely hypocritical to what the intention of instant replay was created for. And I, I hope the NFL Rules Committee and the Replay Committee start to look at what is happening to the replay system because it's the exact opposite of what it was originally intended to do. It was supposed to be an aid. And, if, and a call that was made on the field, if there was an absolute in, you know, conclusive evidence that exists to overturn the call, the original call was supposed to stand. You're not seeing that. You're seeing the exact opposite right now. You're seeing the replays being looked at a million times until they can find a reason to overturn the call. Now I'm going to take this a step further. The NFL has been very, you know, it, it almost seems like it's gone in a direction where it's very offensive friendly. It's very beneficial to the offensive player. The pass interference rules. Penalties the way they exist where they seem to be a lot harder if a penalty is called on a defense as opposed to an offense. They, you know, the fans, they love the numbers. Fantasy football players love stats because they watch their players' stats go up. The games are more high scoring. The defenses are suffering. I am concerned over the way the replays seem to be not benefiting the receiver as they're catching the ball. And maybe this is the way that the NFL is starting to get back at the offensive player. Because I'm, I'm, every time we see a disputed catch now, I'm waiting for it to be overturned. Is it a way that within the rules committee, within the replay officials, maybe straight up from the commissioner's office and the owners, maybe they've seen a little too much offense and they're trying to think of a collusive way to get back at the offensive players that are putting up ridiculous numbers and, oh, by the way, quarterbacks and receivers are getting paid at, you know, at an astronomical rate. Maybe there's a way to reduce that. And I've always had a conspiracy thought in regards to collusion because I think collusion still exists in the world of sports today. It's not as pronounced and I think a lot of people, especially when we're talking about owners, multi-million dollar people that have the ability with the money that they have to do almost whatever they want, they're doing a better job of keeping their footprints. 
they're doing a better job of keeping the things that they're doing or could potentially be doing. Of course, this is alleged. This isn't. I don't have facts to back this up. It's just a theory. But I tell you, it's a theory that could very well happen. Now, if if I'm wrong on this theory, which is fine because it's just a theory. I, I think we're going to find some evidence over time that owners in professional sports, and particularly in the National Football League, have the ability to impact what it is that they're seeing. Now, I do want to hear the owner that's upset, thinks there's too much scoring in a league. You know, that owner that's upset because every single top quarterback or quarterbacks that are not even very good, are getting very well compensated. Receivers are getting 100 catches every year. And some of them are not even considered the elite of the elite. So is there a connection between the catch rule and the fact that replays seem to almost be out there, going out of their way to try to overturn a call and take catches away from these receivers? Is there any connection to that and potentially the the fact that we're looking to curtail back the amount of scoring and the amount of high fantasy points, high catches and throws? Is there a possibility that there is some sort of collusion going on? It could be. I think we we got a long way to go if we're going to throw out any evidence in it. But I think it's worth discussion. And I, th- I think we got to talk about it. And obviously, listen, the NFL is going to get together with his rules committee and the replay committee, and they're going to try to figure out what a catch is. Yeah, should, should a catch, you know, what constitutes possession? What constitutes that so-called football move? Yeah, it was another word that was thrown out there years ago. I still don't think it's been defined by the National Football League. But we're going to get to a point where either the replays, the way things are called on the field, are going to stand, or it's almost like the exact opposite. And I, I am a little bit concerned about replay the way it was originally intended to be. And I know I keep saying this over and over again, but it's 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 a it's a point that needs to be thrown out there because I don't think it's it's part of the discussion anymore. Replay is supposed to be an aid to the officials and the umpires. Now it's simply to micromanage them or almost to prove them wrong. A call on the field is supposed to stand unless there's absolute inconclusive evidence. I mean, if, if, if the evidence is inconclusive, the call is supposed to stand. Now it looks like if you take a freeze frame out of a million frames, and there's one of them that looks like there's a possibility that the ball may not be possessed, then the call is overturned, which... I think is the exact opposite of what replay was supposed to be intended for. The same thing with the the base play at second, you know, second base. First of all, the reviews are talking about whether there's interference 